So, I was talking about fatigue, right? One of the most common comments I've heard from people, and I'd love to know if anybody of you had the same concept here, about New Super Mario Bros. U was, oh, it's another new Mario Bros. game. And so everyone just walked away from it. And that is a damn shame, because this game is awesome. Uh, in fact, I believe, hang on, let me double check the notes here, but I believe this is our second, let me double check, double checking, double checking, yep, this is our second best scoring Mario game, uh, actually surpassing Mario 3D World, uh, after, after Yoshi's Island, after Yoshi's Island, sorry, so Yoshi's Island is still the king, and it deserves to be, but New Super Mario Bros. U just kinda nailed it, uh, first of all, we brought back a lot of Telling is Mario 3, which is sort of sad, but it's still true. But we did a lot better on brickwork and themes and there being like a flow of events rather than just random stages that have nothing to do with each other, which always just kind of throws me a little bit. Um, and it's just not something I enjoy in general. But also, God, do they nail the level design. The level design of this game is, is you, you could t think of this, for those of you who are more familiar with Mario Wonder, think of this as a prototype for Mario Wonder. Uh, with the same general level of creativity and coolness. Um, we've got the new power-ups. We've got the existing power-ups. They added Yoshi back. They added the baby Yoshis, which are effectively an easy mode. And, of course, sing along with the music, because, of course, they do. They really like to throw just gimmicks and fascinating, fun gameplay comps at you. Almost every single world, I'm staring at my list here of the positives. Like, World 4 got tons of positives. World 5 got tons of positives. World 6 got tons of positives. World 7 got tons of positives. The only one that didn't get a lot was 8 and 1. Other than that, really, 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 really fun, cool stuff going on. Um, oh, also, by the way, did I mention this game? has co-op. In fact, it has good co-op. It also has multiple paths and an actual overall design, just like this is Mario 3. Uh, or actually, yeah, I know, Mario 3 or Mario World again. So actual overall design and multiple paths and optional fun stuff you can go get. And it's a really, really, really solid game. It also, so we were playing the Switch version, which comes with Luigi mode baked in. Luigi mode is awesome. Um, so for those of you who played the Mario Galaxy series, Luigi mode is functionally a Comet Metal for every single stage of the game. The levels have been shrunk, remixed to be much harder, and you have much less time to do them. That's awesome. It's an optional, fun, hard mode thing, which adds even more longevity to an already fantastic game. And that's on top of good itemization and uh, the camera thing from Wii. They brought that back, so the camera's amazing. I actually played this game all the way 100% co-op with my friend Gary on the Wii U, and I never regretted a second of that. I was really tempted to go ahead and 100% the Switch version again, just because I was enjoying myself that much. I cannot praise this game enough. But all that said, most of you are probably going to say, ah, you suck and you're dumb. And I do suck, and I am dumb. But I wanted to talk about iterative design, because I've noticed a lot of people don't like iterative design. Or at the very least, it's something a lot of people complain about. Um, we see this with games like Call of Duty, with games like Pokemon, with games like Elder Scrolls games, right? Now, iterative design is something I'm actually hugely in favor of, personally. It's when you take something and you just do it again, but better. Iterating, right? Iterating on the previous concepts rather than innovating, which is when you try something completely new. Uh, Dragon Quest would be another series that does a lot of iterative design. Each Dragon Quest adding additional little concepts or quality of life features or gameplay mechanics or whatever to just make the game a little bit better over time. Now, Proviso, it only counts as iterative design if you succeed. You do have to actually make the game better with each step you go forward. Otherwise, well, I'm not going to name examples, but you can probably think of a few. But that's the new Super Mario Bros. series in a nutshell. This is the last one as of this, the moment of this recording. There has never been another new Super Mario Bros. game. And the path from new to Wii to 2 to you has been pretty linearly up. There was one dip because Wii was better than 2, but otherwise each game has been iterating on the previous, and this is the result of that. Some people don't like that, and that's fine. Do you mind sharing why? If, I, if you don't mind, like, I'm actually honestly curious of the alternative perspective of the matter. I always like hearing what people think and say about certain concepts, and this being one of them. Because, I, like I said, I see this all the time. I see this in movies, I see this in games. Hell, I see this in music, for God's sakes. But the other reason I bring up the iterative game design thing is, as a direct consequence, that means 
generally speaking, if you only really have time, money, or interest in trying one of a particular series, you should probably pick the most recent one. And that's true here as well. If you want to try out the new Super Mario Brothers series, and you're not really invested in it, you don't want to play through all four games, just play this one, because this one rocks. Okay, so that's most of the Mario games. We've got one more to talk about after this. I'll see you in a bit. <laughs> 